I'm Jason Epperson, this is RV Miles, and it is time for a January roundup of all the truck news out there. There is a lot of it, so I made its own special video for this month. We got a lot to cover, including the biggest fine ever levied under the Clean Air Act heading to Cummins for diesel defeat devices, some EV pickup news, and a whole lot more. Let's start off, though, with Ford, a recall of 112,000 F-150s for a part that could break and cause the vehicle to roll away when parked. The truck's rear axle hub bolt could break and cause the axle hub spines to become damaged, which can result in a rollaway when the vehicle is in park without the parking brake applied or cause a loss of drive power in motion. The recall affects model year 21 through 23 F-150s that have the trailer tow max duty package. If you hear a clicking or a rattling noise that could indicate you have this problem. Owners can take their trucks to a Ford dealer for a repair. Ford will be mailing letters soon with the final actual remedy details, but they say in the meantime, drivers should engage their truck's parking brake when parked. As of December 2nd, there had been 376 warranty reports related to this broken rear axle bolt problem, but Ford said they aren't aware of any reported accidents or injuries related to the issue. Ford is also recalling about 18,000 2023 F-150 and Super Duty trucks for an issue with the steering wheel clock spring, which may have an insufficient weld, causing a loss of electrical connection to the driver's frontal airbag. Dealers will inspect and replace the clock spring as necessary. Interim owner notifications explaining the safety risk are scheduled to be mailed January 8th. A second notice will be sent once remedy parts become available anticipated in the second quarter of 2024. So I guess some of us just won't have an airbag for a few months. Diesel engine manufacturer Cummins has agreed to a massive $1.675 billion settlement for installing defeat devices and other undisclosed emissions equipment on almost a million engines used in Ram pickup trucks. Diesel emission systems have been a hot button issue ever since they became more robust and commonplace back in about 2000 six or so and it looks like cummins in order to boost output numbers and performance has installed devices that defeated them the settlement concerns the emissions equipment used on ram 2500 and 3500 heavy duty pickup trucks between the model years 2013 and 2023 so that's a whole 10 years with the 6.7 liter cummins engine the emissions equipment allowed the dissemination rather than the controlled burn of nitric oxides, compounds that play a role in forming acid rain and smog. It is the biggest fine ever issued under the Clean Air Act and the second largest environmental penalty deal in history, only behind the BP Deepwater Horizon settlement, that big oil spill in the Gulf. Cummins recalled some affected trucks since this was all discovered back in 2019 at the cost of $58 million or so, and it expects the settlement to cost around $2 billion in total when all is said and done, but they don't admit any wrongdoing and don't seem to be concerned about the settlement doing any meaningful harm to the business. More in a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by Liquefied RV Toilet Treatment. Our friend Matt from Matt's RV Reviews went out on a quest to find the best toilet treatment for an RV, the best chemical to break down all the different things that go into your black tank. And he found that there wasn't anything great out there. And he really did go to a chemical manufacturer and put together a new formula that does a fantastic job of breaking down the stuff in your black tank and keeping it smelling nice and flowing cleanly. It's called liquefied and we absolutely love it. I think everybody that I've talked to that has used it loves it. And you can find it on our Amazon store. I will link to that down in the description. There's a lot of toilet treatments out there, and a lot of them don't actually do anything, and they don't really smell that good. Check out Liquefied Toilet Treatment today. Again, check the link in the description below. Ram has released the pricing on their 2025 1500 series trucks. This is a big year for Ram as the long-awaited refresh gets released. Rams haven't been selling so well compared to Fords and Chevys and GMCs as they were getting a bit dated as they hadn't refreshed in a long time. Loyal customers have been waiting for the new lineup to drop, or at least that's the theory. The base price of the lowest trim is up only about $855 compared with last year starting at $42,270. But the big new changes to the lineup are going to cost a pretty penny. If you want the new twin-turbo 3.0-liter inline-six Hurricane engine, you'll pay $2,695 extra for the 420-horsepower standard output version. 
The new power plant, which replaces the Hemi, comes standard on Laramie and Rebel trims starting in the mid-60,000s. There is also a high-output version of the inline-six Hurricane that offers a whopping 540 horsepower and comes standard on limited and longhorn trims starting at 77,000. Going up. And then there's this new tungsten package, which is like the uber-expensive package. I went into detail it on a past episode, and I won't lie, it makes me drool a bit. But good God, it starts at 89 grand. But hey, the seats move 24 different ways and it has 23 speakers inside. That's not an exaggeration. It has 23 speakers in a truck. What are we even doing here? These trucks should go on sale in the next couple months. What we don't know about yet is that new hybrid Ram charger that's coming later with a battery electric powertrain and a gas engine backup. There's also the fully electric Ram 1500 REV that's set to go on sale by the end of the year. Who knows what those two trucks will cost, but it won't be cheap. In fact, for all electric trucks, the new year is bringing changes that have all of them running a little bit more expensive or a lot more expensive. It's partially due to changes in the federal $7,500 EV tax credit. Most of the battery and plug-in hybrid EVs that were eligible for the clean vehicle tax credit have now lost that eligibility. The tax credit has always required the vehicle's final assembly take place in North America, and there are income caps for the buyer and a price cap for the vehicle, no more than $55,000 for a sedan or $80,000 for an SUV truck or minivan. What has changed is the battery material requirements. Any vehicle with a battery that contains material from or made by a, quote, foreign entity of concern, that's Russia, Iran, North Korea, and China, is no longer eligible for the tax credit. The rule also applies to batteries made by Chinese companies, even if they are produced in the U.S. So now the Ford F-150 Lightning is the only EV truck that gets the full credit, as long as you can get one for under $80,000. The Rivian R1T has been dropped to a half credit of $3,750, and the Cybertruck, although it did qualify last year, is not on the list. Perhaps a handful of people who actually took delivery in 2023 got the credit, but new owners will not in 2024 as far as everything I can find out. But what do these EV tax credits actually do? Ford, being the only truck maker to have one fully qualify, has announced that it will raise prices on the base model Lightning by five to $10,000 this year, while dropping the prices of the most expensive ones by up to $7,000. Meanwhile, GM is offering a $7,500 rebate for all its vehicles that don't qualify. So, getting the tax credit is enticing Ford to game the system, and not getting it is causing GM to slash prices. I say this as someone who took advantage of the EV tax credit for our second car. It seems as though market forces mean people just pay what they can afford for a car or truck all in. The credit just increases the price of the vehicle. Believe me, I'm actually a fan of EVs. I know a lot of you aren't, and I am in favor of incentivizing their purchase responsibly but this doesn't seem to be the way. GM, by the way, should be releasing their Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra electric trucks this summer, which probably won't get a tax credit since no GM vehicle does anymore. By the way, I hear a lot of talk about how auto sales are down due to high interest rates and economic uncertainty. Well, it doesn't seem to be the case. GM ended up on top of all automakers in the US in 2023, besting Toyota with a 14% increase in sales over 22, selling 2.6 million new vehicles. Ford was up 7.1%. It looks like the final total US auto sales will be up around 10% when all's reported over 2022, and that's with a six week labor strike. The increase in sales though, could actually be good for consumers because it really means production is stabilized and even though MSRPs continue to rise, those dealer charges over MSRP are all but gone and rebates and incentives are back. Used car prices are also dropping due to more vehicle availability. On one of our December News Roundup videos, I mentioned the end of Apple CarPlay on GM vehicles, which apparently isn't very RV focused and somebody got really mad at me for putting CarPlay stuff in this. But judging by many of the other comments though, most of you find Apple CarPlay or Android Auto essential, especially considering that you can use it to run RV navigation apps like RV Life and Road Trippers to get RV friendly routing pushed to your vehicle. But I bring it up because GM said they were dropping support of it due to safety concerns, trying to say for some reason it's more dangerous than using built-in navigation without citing any study, report, or data to that effect. 
Really, they want you to pay for car-connected features, which they expect to make a lot of money in the coming years. I personally think removing support just causes people to use their phones more and to go back to annoying dash mounts. And guess what? That's what Ford thinks too. Amidst the huge backlash against GM's decision, Ford CEO Jim Farley took to X to let customers know that Ford is committing to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because it's safer. Quote, we're committed to keeping Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Ford customers love the features because they help keep their eyes on the road and hands on the wheel. Apple CarPlay has been around for about 10 years now and is about to get a big update that will probably be the end of it at GM. So kudos to Ford for that, but Ford is in my black tank for another reason. I got a letter a few days ago from Ford about our 2021 Super Duty, offering me $100 as a make good on the fact that they apparently overstated the horsepower on 2021 and 2022 trucks with a 7.3 liter engine in marketing materials for both trucks and motorhomes. So look, it's only 15 horsepower out of 430 or so. Would anyone notice it? Probably not. Is it a good make good gesture from Ford? I don't know. Multiple times Ford's been caught fudging the numbers. In 2022, Ford was forced to pay almost $20 million over false claims of both mileage and payload ratings in Super Duty trucks. It's all deception to keep those best-in-class numbers. In the past, they've advertised numbers for a truck you couldn't even buy, stripped of a spare tire and a jack and a center console, reducing all that weight boost payload in particular. Anyway, I think this is just a cheap way to get ahead of any litigation with refunds totaling about 0.1%. I'd love to know in the comments what you think about these stories and what you think about this format. Should I keep all the truck news together? Should I put videos out like this that are just truck news or should I keep them folded into the regular RV and camping news videos? Let me know, sound off below. Thanks a lot for being here. Hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like this. Hit the like button to let YouTube know they should show this video to other people. And we'll see you next time. Bye everybody.